Welcome to episode 147 of The Endless Stream. I'm Aiden, and this week, I'm not on the podcast. This week, it's Brian and Kevin left to their own devices, and they talk a wide variety of things. They talk Comic-Con, they talk The Irish Wish, they talk The Crow, they talk a, a John Cena movie that I'm not quite sure what it is, but they do talk about it. If you enjoy what you hear, please consider subscribing to the podcast, heading over to iTunes, heading over to Spotify, rating, reviewing, liking, subscribing, all of those good things really help us out on top of that you can head over to instagram at the endless cast where we put up art to go with each episode and that's a great place to shoot us a message tell us if you agree or disagree with the opinions suggest something for us to watch anything you want to say that's a great place to say it or you can send us an email at the endless at gmail.com all of that being said let's get into the episode speaking of rickety wrecked i watch ricky ricky finicky the john cena movie i did watch it i did watch that I thought it was great. This is where me and you are going to differ, right? Because like the, I I didn't hate it. Yeah. But it's just very, there, there was a point about, I can't remember what point, somewhere in it, I was just like, this is a Farley Brothers film, isn't it? Like it, it is. Oh, really? and it's not the brothers. It, it's, it's one of the Farleys. Um, it's Peter, whom I'm just assuming is one of the Farley brothers, but it has the Farley brothers kind of all over it, you know? Yeah. It's very dumb and dumber, something about Mary, Kingpin kind of, but yeah. it just, it just yeah, none of these, none of these work are bad for movies. me, you know? Yeah. They're, okay, they're great movies. They're, those are three great movies. Yeah. Um, dumb and dumber. There's something about Mary. Like they're great movies. Yeah. Um, and this feels like one of them i don't know did it feel like that to you okay did you get um, that like or i tease i just did i kind of i just because i watched it a couple of weeks ago i watched it a couple of weeks ago so i have to kind of think um i know i know i really enjoyed it now parts of it were daft and silly or whatever you know um, that's fine yeah but uh but no i know i did really enjoy it i did really enjoy it uh i just i maybe it did maybe it did i can't remember my initial mm thoughts essentially you know uh but i did like it um that that uh i was messing with it, you it's know, a great really, concept uh, you know like it's a great no concept it is it's a really it just, good concept it just and like i didn't hate it it was just it was just very it's it's fine you know it's yeah like i think i think someone I scene think is great in that. it like he's he's yeah. He's, oh, he's seen really game, you know. Yeah. He's he's yeah. he's really game for the concept. Like he fucking, yeah. he, he really swings for it. But yeah, he, like he's great in it. He and he's yeah. brilliant to watch in it. To be fair, like yeah. uh, no, I like I definitely really really enjoyed it. But I was messing with Emer, and it was just kind of like you know, uh, I was like, look at that real this good diverse group of friends. You know, like everybody's represented. <laughs> minorities homosexuals and i and then like you see that what's the guy adam something he's a ginger guy oh uh andrew santino is it andrew santino yeah and i i, I didn't i didn't realize his name was santino i know i know it is santino now yeah but i but it's just like i was like wow and look a real irish looking motherfucker and then you see a surname <laughs> and it's just like what the fuck <laughs> but yeah. it's just like that's the representation we need look at those big irish eyebrows irish fucking hair <laughs> irish beard it's like wow that's what a diverse group of friends but uh no it is it is pretty funny and as you said john cena does absolutely play a blinder he really does yeah. a great job in it yeah uh but speaking of prying comedies because i loved Ricky Sinicki, John Cena was great. Upon your recommendation, I watched American Fiction. I I personally think, to be honest, to have that in the comedy drama section <laughs> is a fucking stretch. But like the the thing is, I found it to be more comedic than I was expecting. Oh right, okay. I, I okay. expected it to be more serious. Okay. I, I thought okay. I, I can't think of a good example, but I, I expected it to be more of a kind of a. It was more overtly funny than I thought. I thought it was going to be a kind of like a drier, funnier oh, satire. Okay. Like wow. it, it, it was kind of more of a parody than a satire, but then with really heavy moments out of yeah. nowhere in yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't want to spoil it, but yeah. It, it, but I think it balanced those things well. Like it, it, it had. 
it had overtly comic moments then with these really fucking like but you see I would say like in the way like I'd never describe Sopranos as a uh, cr- comedy crime show Sopranos is really funny yeah you know but it's like with this movie it's just kind of like I probably would have called it just a drama that has like funny moments in it but I wouldn't call it a comedy do you know what I mean yeah I think the comedy was a bit of a stretch. It's it's a good it's a good movie. It's it's definitely quite slow. In a sense, it's always a slow burn or something. Yeah, it's like, like it, it's like it, a very it, subtle or subdued movie or something. So the the kind of the brief plot synopsis is a a writer who's teaching in a college hasn't published a book in a while, and he's fed up of. He's fed up teaching his students. He's, he's yeah, the current state of things that kind of, mm-hmm. and the, the current state of publishing and teaching. And he decides to he sees this other black author who is getting lots of acclaim from writing like a really cliched, stereotypical kind of portrayal of like black about black community. black America. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. so he he as a as a kind of a fuck you to the the industry. He starts to write something in that style, something like just really. Stereotypical, cliched, yeah, and yeah. he people love it, and he kind of ke- needs to keep up this this kind of pretense because it's he's start, it's starting to get him more fame and success than he's kind of ever had, but he he hates that it's because of this genre, he, he, this thing he wrote as a joke, essentially, you know. Yeah, it takes, he's, he's, it, it takes sorry, so go. long to get to that point in the film. There's about an hour of yeah. things, yeah. and. I, I don't think it was boring up until that point. I was just surprised that it took. Yeah, considering like I felt like that's the premise of the movie. Yeah, it's like, but then again, you know, Man on Fire takes an hour for. Uh, yeah, I I, I, I think part of it as well is like I don't want to spoil stuff, but money becomes a bigger problem for him than it was previously. Yeah, because I think yeah. the question would be like, how could somebody principled like him? given so quickly to the the success of money and it it, it needs to set up the the fact that yes yeah there yeah, were yeah. there were reasons he needs that money and it takes its time to kind of set that up but i wasn't bored you know i, no, I, I no, enjoyed no. it i like um, i liked all the i like the commentary of the movie i like the kind of the the there's a really like, funny moment in, moment in it as well but i can't talk about it without spoiling it but it's when they're on the beach you know and it just kind of surprised yes. me when uh there's a there's a character walks in out of nowhere and just like kind of starts asking him something and they they both get like so so hostile and aggressive with yeah, him out yeah, of nowhere yeah, yeah. and in a really sustained way and it like that was a very funny scene that cracked yeah, me up yeah I know for sure like um, there there is there is like great bits in it and stuff but, like that uh, made me laugh louder than anything in in Ricky Stenicky you know fair um, fair fair yeah. Yeah, I did find Ricky Snake very funny. Uh, John, <laughs> John Cena is wild, man. Uh, especially when he just goes into that. He goes into his own monologue and he goes, oh, sorry, that's just a, a bit from my childhood. <laughs> it's just like, Jesus Christ. It's funny as well how much they actually have in common when you think about it, you know? They're both about a person that doesn't exist. Yeah. And like keeping up the pretense of a, yeah. Yeah. Of a person that, that doesn't uh, exist. The ending, the ending of American fiction is interesting for sure. Uh, again, kind of like you know, uh, that kind of it definitely was more comedic of an ending than a lot of the moments in the movie or whatever. Yeah. But uh, but uh, no, I kind of like very, very like really clever movie, really great premise and all that kind of stuff. Um, and like we have spoken about this before, Brian, and like kind of. Like, do I hesitate to say this? Not really. Uh, we've spoken about this before. How we feel, like, kind of say how how the Irish are portrayed, and like we're we're the biggest uh, culprits of this, you know. Mm-hmm. But like Ireland, when it's portrayed, it's just like hokey country people that are just naive country potatoes uh, that are broke, or else just like inner city. Uh, gangland thugs that are like you know just trying to get the hustle and survive on the streets and like you know or whatever but it's always just like it's always just like we're poor we're stupid uh, or else it's just like drugs and gangs and it's mm-hmm. just like it's like it's stupid mm-hmm. it's like kind of like yeah it's like sometimes a portrayal of uh, in our own shows of ourselves is annoying 
Uh, so I can completely understand how this guy would be. Oh, Jesus, I can't say I understand, but I can imagine how. Uh, yeah, like 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 this 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 author is just frustrated with the, the constant portrayal of of uh, the the black uh, American community in a certain spotlight in a certain way where he's just like not all of us listen to rap and not all of us care about these things and not all of us do this like some of us like these and this you know so like kind of you know when when he, even when he goes into the uh, the bookshop and he finds he's under like African American authors like why why is this book here you know but it's so I, I it's so true I say all that stuff is like like you know incredibly frustrating uh, for them over there because like, that's, that's you know, like one of the things in as well like is is you know his sister is a doctor his brother is a plastic surgeon you know and they yeah. they've got like a a beach house yeah you know? yeah because we you so often don't see. I mean, it, it's obviously not everybody's experience as well, but like, no, just no. black people are never, almost never represented like that. Yeah, and he even says in the movie, system. yeah, but he even says that in the movie, uh, how he just doesn't feel like he can relate to a lot of portrayal of X, Y, and Z in, yeah. in media, you know? So, uh, but like, I think that kind of stuff in the movie is very interesting, for sure, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, you know, uh, aside from Adam, St- what's his name? Adam Satoro? Andrew Santino. I think and, I don't know Andrew Santini, yeah. whatever his name is. Aside from aside from him, I've never felt represented in a, in a, any media as an Irish person. Big shout out to Andrew. <laughs> oh, never, <Santini>? never even <laughs> in the wind that shakes the barley. No? Uh, I've never watched it. Never watched. It. Okay, I don't think I've seen it. Um, I must watch it. I actually I should watch it, but no, like uh, again, kind of like just stereotypes. And sometimes we can be the biggest culprits of that. Like I said, Ireland <laughs> portrays themselves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a certain way in things and it's just it's constant like if there's going to be an RTE show about something you can be damn sure it's going to be uh, love hate love hate or fucking pure mule yeah you know that's that's the gambit here that's 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 what we got going on um, but American Fiction would I recommend it uh, I'd probably recommend it to you but you've seen it already <laughs> <laughs> maybe Eber's dad but uh, I liked it though it's a good movie it's just it's just not as I, I, like I said call it a comedy to stretch okay in my opinion it does yeah. have funny moments yeah it's good it to does. see uh, yeah. good to see Adrian Brody is that his name or Adam Brody yes yeah yeah rocking that mullet I was gonna say sporting a, a yeah. strong mullet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, good, good Pull, to see pulling him. it off. <laughs> pulling it off. Yeah, yeah. He's he's doing it. Uh, the, the the plastic surgeon brother. He's a great actor. I think he's brilliant. In he's a lot fantastic. Of I've seen him in. Uh, I think you've seen him in that a... episode of Brooklyn Nine Nine. I have not. I don't think it's so. one of the probably one of the best episodes of Brooklyn Nine Nine. Okay. Um, okay. It's he was in Black this Panther. Is, us, is it? Uh, this is us. I think he was. Yeah. I yeah, so. and Black Panther. Yeah, I know, I know he's Black Panther. To yeah. cat, to, uh, Michael B. Jordan's father. Yes. Yeah, uh, but he's a great actor. He's really, really good. He's, he's fantastic. In, uh, he's in a few things, anyways. He is good. Yeah. Uh, incredible shape. Incredible shape. Hmm. 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 You know, it's a sad movie. Um, moving on to not sad uh, he, things. He, 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 every scene he had was very funny. Did you not think? Yes, no, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he's he's like, good at it. Yeah. Just yeah. when he's on the phone to him, and he's yeah. you know he's doing lines of coke, and he kind of hangs up yeah. on him, like funny. Yeah. When he's swimming in the pool, he's funny. Yeah, um, I thought he was funny. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have to. Uh, you know, well, look, he, he but the power parts of it are funny. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, uh, and it's definitely get, it gets like you know funnier towards the end with certain things, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, but uh, but look, good movie. Uh, check it out. Uh, it's not Ricky Stenicki, but what can you do? Well, I mean, what is? What is? Ricky Stenicki. What is? Um, did I watch anything else? Oh, oh God. Okay. I did watch it. I watched Madam Web. <laughs> I'm probably going to watch it at some point. I'm very... <laughs> you know, I think it's, it, it's... Something like that is interesting. You know, it's like, how did this get... How to get made? How do they get fast tracked? Why is there, did Pepsi pay for all of it? You know, oh, um, I, no I was just saying idea. that a, a film that's so obviously bad like that is really interesting to me. You know, um, 
Yeah. It's the kind of thing I could watch and not yes. enjoy, but just be like, how did they? Dude, dude, it's <laughs> wild, wild. Yeah. You don't care about spoilers, so we could talk. I think we, I think we can yeah. talk candidly about this because it's yeah. absolutely fucking wild. I think uh, I pretty much know everything that see. happens in it, but do I, go on. Know, yeah. Say, say again. I was saying, I, I think I know everything that happens in it anyway. But you, you go ahead and give us the, give us the synopsis in your your breakdown. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, well, synopsis is uh, Dakota Johnson plays. Uh, Cassie, oh, I can't think of her for a second name, but, uh, Cassandra or something, and uh, she, her mother was studying spiders in the Amazon <laughs> when she is, <laughs> when she is. That, li- that line her. from the trailer, did you, have you heard that line? Yeah, it's like in the Amazon, yeah. studying spiders. M- or my something. mother was studying spiders, it's something like my mother was studying spiders in the peruvian jungle or something like that and it's just like it, it's just the most expository line of dialogue and apparently it's yeah, not even in no. the film but it's just, they it probably isn't yeah, yeah 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 but uh it's just yeah i know you i know exactly what you're saying it's so just like oh man it's like this movie's wild it's so bad and like like i watched it with Emer, god bless her and like i think Emer was also entertained but also like shocked and at one stage we were, we were late enough and I kind of had like obviously dozed off for a second or you know kind of like like even yeah. thought I was sleeping or I, you know whatever and she turned around and it's just like uh, oh jeez don't fall asleep and leave you watching the shit movie alone <laughs> you know but um, like uh, yeah so uh, Dakota Johnson she is a paramedic in New York City and she works with Ben Parker uh, and uh, she makes a joke uh, in the first 20 minutes of the movie saying that New York's not so bad or something, something like that. But she's like, what, you're going to get shot in Queens? And uh, it's just like, oh, God. But uh, anyway, she's her her mother is studying spiders in the Amazon. She finds a spider and apparently tries people in the Amazon, use the spider to give them, the, give them strength. Uh, and one of her bodyguards is also aware of this. Uh, he betrays her, shoots everybody, takes the spider. And then she's taken by the Amazon people and put into a pool where a spider bites her. And then she gives birth and died. Uh, and the Amazon fella says to her before she dies, basically that like your daughter's gonna come back here, and I'll be here waiting for her to give her answers. And he's all like in like painted in the red Amazon paint type of stuff that you'd see, but they have like vines covered in themselves, so oh, it's, like, God. spider costume. Uh, it's very bizarre, and they run around like Spider Man on trees, and then uh, then it just cuts to Cassie driving around New York in you know chaos of the ambulance and all that kind of stuff. Uh, sh- she has a i think a near dead experience that kind of awakens the spider in her or whatever uh then it cuts to the villain of the story uh and he's he is at an opera brings a woman brings a woman back from the opera and sleeps with her and then has this dream of these three spider women killing him and he has the same dream every single night and he wants to find these women before they kill him because he's an old man in this vision and he wants to find these three costumed women before they kill him uh, and then he ends up killing the woman that he was with. Just it's a whole thing. Like it's like it's weird because he, at the moment you're in just this guy is at the opera. He seduces this woman, brings her back to his place. Uh, he, then it just cuts into this random action scene from fucking nowhere, and then stops. And it's him in the bed with the woman that he has seduced. Uh, he's using her. He's using her to get like information or something. So uh, he manipulated her and. Uh, but like it's just kind of like what the fuck the action scene to him to, and then you just go back to this the the you know the scene where he's in bed with this woman you know it's like it's just it's just it's awful it's awful, but uh, he uses then some sort of technology I can't remember how or what but he uses he somehow has managed to find those faces, uh but he uses sick technology to kind of CCTV CCTV like locate them you know. Oh, it's like I'm not even sure what I'm talking about anymore. It's just <laughs> horrendous. Sounds but, like you're having uh, a fever dream. <laughs> bad. But like the thing is, like, it just it goes nowhere. And at once at one stage, like, kind of you like you never see the characters in their costume, except yeah. for the visions, you know? Yeah. It's so terrible. Um That's such a horrible they, bait and switch, because like they, they showed that shot in the trailers and it makes it seem like Yeah, it's an action movie in costumes yeah. and stuff. Yeah. No, it's it's set in the two thousands, so they're all just teenagers that are yeah. like i will say she, dakota johnson just drives robs a taxi <laughs> jesus she robs a taxi and drives these three teenage women 
uh, girls to the woods and then drops them off there and says, look, I'll be back in a few hours. And it's just like, what do you expect three fucking vulnerable women, girls, to do in the forest? Like, you just, you know, what the fuck? She, she, they destroy this place or whatever. She, she escapes through a taxi, uh, in a taxi. They, they rob a taxi and they, they drive away and stuff. And then she just nonchalantly drives a taxi for the rest of the movie. It's just like, you don't think someone's looking for that car. Like, why would you drive back to your house in that stolen car? I hate when scripts do something like that. It's like, just have her, just have her have a car. Where does she have to, like, yeah, stealing a taxi and then it not having any, like, it's not a nitpick, you know, like the, the, the world of your film needs to make sense. some sort of sense. Oh, it's like, if she's just going to be driving around without consequences, then just have her drive her own car. It, it's, oh man, it's confusing. Uh, when she, when she starts kind of like take, you know, getting used to her powers and using them properly, it's just like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, like it's just it's awful, and then she she like but like there's there's basically twice where she just takes out the back and like hit him with a car. One time, but the first time she drives her taxi into a diner and takes him out, and then the second time she drives like an ambulance through a billboard or a building, and then like comes out of the building and crashes into him and stuff. It's horrendous. The worst part of it, the like oh this so she she ends up going back to the Amazon for some reason. And oh yeah, and he told her like you, you can you have to control the web, and the web is basically her being able to project, bi- 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 locate essentially, to be able to be in multiple places at once, you know. So there's a scene where she they're fighting the bad guy on top of a big Pepsi commercial sign, and uh, uh, the three other girls are in like precarious situations, you know. So. Like, she's like, oh, I can, like, you know, she all of a sudden taps into the web and she can bite, okay. So she runs, it's like, so there's one version of her, at, like, say, one of the spider women, like, lifting her up because she's falling off the edge of the building. And then another, and then there's a spider girl that's hanging on to some rafters and she just bite her over there and she's beside her going, like, you're going to be okay. She's just, like, she bite okay to comfort her. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, there's no action. She saves one, she yeah. saves one, and the other one, she's just like, you're going to be okay. And it's just like, what is this? She goes back to the Amazon and she meets the guy who told her mother that you'd come back here years later or blah, blah, blah. She'd come back here years later and not answer her questions. And he says something to her. Oh, it's if the you, it's the Peter Parker you, line, is it? Or something? Yeah, if you take on or the responsibility, ben Park line, you'll yeah. get... Yeah, he says, like, if you take on the responsibility, you get great power, right? Yeah. He says it and it's just like, ugh, gross. <laughs> and then <laughs> later in the movie, like, fucking three minutes later, like, she's doing her thing and she taps into the web and this voice comes up again. With great responsibility comes great power, or whatever way they butcher the fucking line yeah. because they kind of butcher it, you know. Uh, and she starts using that kind of power and stuff. And then at the end, you see a shot of all of them and Madame Webb in her. Yeah, okay, so she she does have. She finds out that her, the reason her mother was studying spiders in Amazon was because she, she was going to die as a baby and her mother was looking for a cure. Okay. And then. And then for some reason at the end, she has jet black hair. She's in a wheelchair. I can't remember why. I only I, I can't remember why. Uh, and and there's a reveal then of all of them and her and her costume and stuff. It's gross. <laughs> it's it's so awful. It's insane it's so that awful. like this is one of the most popular comic book characters, one of the most popular properties the most in googled existence. the most googled superhero in history is Spider-Man. Yeah. and they have this and they they they've you know multiple times done good things with it yeah like the so Spider- they can Spider versus sony like yeah it is yeah you know i mean the raimi's raimi's spider-man is 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 yeah. sony yeah um like there's a version of this film that i could enjoy and watch you know i don't think um, so really. No, like that, as in like taking the concept of the character, setting up the, oh, the yeah, Spider Verse. Okay. You know, there, there's a yeah. version of this that that could work, but yeah. they just yeah. don't know what they're doing with it. And I just feel sorry for everybody involved. Uh, and like, I, I like Dakota Johnson. I still like Dakota Johnson. Like, yep. you know, it's it's nothing off of her. But uh, like, she looked geez. great in that dress on Seth Meyers. Good God, I didn't see it. Maybe I did. I didn't see it. Go watch that clip. Incredible. He sounded like, he sounded like uh, Harry Lecter there. <laughs> but uh, um, 
But uh, like I like I like Dakota Johnson and stuff, but she plays this role. She plays this bit really strange. She's basically just really cynical and kind of it's like you know like there's a great there's a great uh, comedian on TikTok or Instagram or something, and she always does like these really funny videos of just like that indie girl in that in that movie. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. you know it's just all that kind of stuff, and it's like some of the way Dakota Johnson plays this is that kind of like you know she's just yeah. everything in this movie is like just insufferable you know even when she's on the on her own in her apartment and she's her she you know she opens the window so she pours milk into the bowl and her cat comes in you know and she's just like us strays have got to stick together oh, God. and then the cat's eating and she's like must have been hungry and it's just like i feel like i'm just playing a video game with like poor dialogue when you're just walking <laughs> around aimlessly just you know, interacting you know with know objects I mean? and stuff yeah, interacting yeah. with objects yeah yeah i don't need this right now and oh this looks like it could go you know it's just it's just none of this is fucking oh it's just like oh, stri- oh, it's, do you know what i mean it's just it's yeah, yeah, mindless yeah, do, do. nonsense it's like what the fuck is this um oh i don't know why the bad guy is wearing a weird spider-man suit this like he's a great villain like they, they could have made a yeah, great yeah they, the, there's, the a, there's a great film where he's hunting three spider women you know um yeah there's a good there's a good there's a good action comic book movie in there with that kind of premise you know um a, you know a dark spider-man essentially you know kind of yeah I, I it's crazy to me that the spider-verse is so good that they haven't said hey let's let's just have them do their thing in live action too let's just fucking trust them because it couldn't it couldn't be worse than what we've ended up with when we've made morbius and venom and this and fucking craven coming on the way you know <laughs> like that's yeah and like venom morbius madam web craven that's is that five films because they've made two venom films and they're making a third one so six the third are, i think the third comes out this year yeah that's yeah. six now venom's been a moderate hit for them but the rest have been just disastrous whereas like they could have given this to any of the people working on spider-verse and just been like fuck it look they're animation directors they're you know maybe they can't do live action but it couldn't be worse <laughs> it could it just I couldn't just, be worse than madam web like or more i just i just can't crazy. understand i just can't understand also though and to be fair and no shame to tom hardy but it is what it is i just don't understand how the fuck we have three venom movies mm-hmm They're they're a tough watch. Yeah, I think the first one had, had, had a kind of thought we were okay, but I had, I had to watch it again. Touch watch. <laughs> um. Oh God. Well, look, kind of. Oh God, if I just. It, it's just it's it's an experience, anyways. That's for sure. Don't know if I recommend it. I might try and watch Ackman too at some stage. That's probably also a terrible idea. Did you watch Ackman too? No. God, no. God, no. And I did not. Well, let's, let's talk about some stuff in the news, I guess. Do you already I watched... Up? Well, there's some other stuff I watched, I guess. And some of it's tied in. Um, I watched Sydney Sweeney, who was in Madam Web. Mm-hmm. Um, in a film also on Prime called reality i want to watch it you've heard of yeah. this yes yeah. I have, have you seen yeah. the trailer uh um, i believe i have i have i just don't remember yeah. but i have yeah and it's good it's about her go on sorry yeah you you've watched it go on um it's good it i think the premise is more interesting than the, execution. the f- film so there's so many bizarre things about this this story. Um, it's based on a true story. Okay. Uh, a whistleblower who was working, I think for, I don't know, was it directly with the NSA or a company that was subcontracted by the NSA? But mm-hmm. uh, she's a whistleblower. And bizarrely, <laughs> her name is Reality Winner. Right? That's her name. Her Christian Rea- name. I, I don't know if her, the name she goes by is Reality okay, yeah. Winner. Because I have seen that in things, yeah. Yeah. So her name is Reality. Um, 
played by Sidney Sweeney in this film called Reality. And she's a whistleblower. And the, the premise for the film is when Reality is arrested by the FBI. Yes. They show up with the warrant and they, I don't know, they have body cams or recorders, but there there are transcripts of the, the entire conversation. Yes. And the film is based on a play that is based on the transcripts. So okay. all of the dialogue in the film is, real. is directly from the transcripts. Right. Yeah. And it's super awkward. It's it, like the way it plays out, it's just like, it's just so strange and unnerving and stilted. Okay. And in those That's moments, it, cut, it cuts to the actual audio and the transcripts. So sometimes it's the actor's essentially lip syncing to the actual oh, it only happens kind of maybe twice just to demonstrate that like this is how this is, it yeah, actually played shit. out if this seems awkward this is how it played played yeah. out and it's pretty short it's it's more of a it's kind of experimental i guess um the story itself is more interesting than the film mm. you know yeah and because it's kind of like that terrible house movie uh do you know the one where it's just like you were living in number three resident, you know, whatever view road and that walls bleed, you will suffer. Do you know that one? The visitor, the stranger. Oh yeah. Something. The watcher. Yeah. The watcher. Yeah. Yeah. It's like interesting yeah. story. Bullshit movie. Yeah. Um, this is better than that, but because it's based very much on the, the real version Actual of the transcripts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of limited then to just telling that story you know so when it's over it's kind of it's a little unresolved and maybe kind of unsatisfying but just a very interesting watch and then it's funny as well because the reason she kind of did what she did in the first place is because she's working in this office for the american government and the entire time she's in her office fox news is on and the news is talking about a distorted reality because kind of what's happening i don't want to i don't okay. want to spoil it but at the same time yeah, it, it's yeah. it happened I, it's real it's it's, it's kind of a but, it's a news thing but but I, I, one I of the reasons like story so yeah I do one of the reasons fun. they one of the reasons they did what they did is because they were working with classified intel so they they were kind of privy to information they knew something was real and had happened and the entire time they're looking at this actual piece of classified intel fox news is on in their office telling them that it didn't happen right oh my god so they know for a fact that something has happened because they're looking at the the document detailing it and meanwhile on the news there's trump and everybody else denying that it happened at all so her reality is being distorted the nature of what the intel the classified intel about is about distorting reality and misinformation and her fucking name is reality like there's just layers and layers of it's so reality. fucking meta yeah, it's, and it's, it's just it's weird. it's bizarre it's so bizarre How and then the happen? fact that the, the fact then that you know the actual arrest and conversation is so if you didn't know anything about this film you'd assume it was like some kind of indie sci-fi okay wow you know you'd kind of watch it thinking what's the twist here what's the You'd expect it to be something like that film, like, uh, is it Vivarium or something, the one with Jesse yes, Eisenberg? And yeah, you'd expect it to be something like that if you didn't know that it was rooted in a thing that actually happened, you know? You'd be, you'd keep expecting it to turn into an X-Files episode or something, because that's how... Yeah, yeah. You're talking about that Jesse Eisenberg movie where they're in the house? Yeah. On the street. Yeah, it's a great one. Yeah. It's wild. That yeah. probably got by a new build, anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's good. Um, I've seen people like be really critical of Sydney Sweeney, and I think this is actually the first thing I've seen her in, and she was good in it. Oh, I've seen her in a few so, things too. She's cool. Yeah. yeah, I like her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, no zero qualms against the poor person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I watched. I did watch that uh, romantic comedy she was in. Don't know if I finished it, but I watched the one with it. Glenn Powell. Is it or Glenn Powell? Yeah, he is. That, yeah. Is it Glenn Powell? He's very cheesy. <laughs> 
like if it's a guy with, I just don't see the appeal of him much but anyways uh, well, yeah. that could change uh, once he gets a Marvel role of a superhero I like I love him but yeah, um, he's going to be Cyclops yeah, clearly exactly. you know? <laughs> yeah, <that'd be> cool. <laughs> yeah well, I, I've always said he was great to be fair but yeah. um, <laughs> uh, I watched a little bit of Delicious in the Dungeon and uh it's, it seems super fun and endearing, you know. Yeah. I watched because uh, I know we, we you told me you'd watch some of it. Uh, I've only watched like maybe twenty minutes or half half of the first episode or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I I wouldn't mind getting into kind of some like little anime like that. That it looks fun, mm-hmm. you know. And I like how they literally talk about like stuff like it's a video game. Like oh, yeah. if we go back there, we sell our stuff. We can buy lower grade stuff, yeah. and then we can just go through the dungeon <laughs> again. And or if you just stay here, I can take your things. I'll sell it, and I get myself better stuff. And it's just like it's so good. Like a lot of it is just like yeah, that's that's computer yeah. games, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah very fun. much. The like the the animation is gorgeous. It's just so clean and yeah. the designs yeah. are lovely the just it's it's, it's really fun. really polished like it it's kind of limited animation in places but it, it just every decision in it is just a really good choice like there there isn't a yeah. bad frame in it you know everything in it is yeah. just like yeah really it's nice. fun it's a fun watch you know it's nice because yeah. it's like adventure and just then like just beautiful drawings of uh, how would you say fictional food or fantasy food mm-hmm. you know it's yeah. good fun you know uh, yeah yeah Good, good, good tropes and good designs and all that kind of stuff. I saw, um, I watched like a, a recap of the X-Men cartoon, which, you know, I said like, even as a kid, I I mean, I was, how old would I have been? Like I would have been 11, 10 or 11, 12. Yeah, we, you know? all, we all know you would have been one of the most exciting children. Yeah, like <laughs> loving X-Men, watching that and going like, this cartoon isn't it like I, I love the story i love the characters but like even from that age i could tell like the fucking quality was dog shit yeah. man. it's so yeah, bad I, I would it's be honest, atrocious I would, like i've been re-watching some of it and uh and uh have you I seen season would, five of it it's a cyclops kicking in the no like like no like that that episode is terrible because there's, there's there's even a point in that episode where, like it's awful it's got xavier's head in the fo- back of xavier's head in the foreground right i, I don't know what the person i don't know what shot the storyboard yeah. artist the animator was going for it's the back of xavier's head in the foreground taking up two-thirds of the frame right and then cyclops is in the left hand side of the screen and he's facing the camera and he's supposed to be like giving out to professor x and he's <laughs> There's then like in the middle of the screen is just a blue or a, a yellow curve and it's supposed to be the front of Xavier's wheelchair. Oh yeah. And it makes no sense because it's like is Cyclops <laughs> underneath the wheelchair? Like it, it's You'll just to, you just said it to me. It's but, a uh, horrible frame, but season five gets even worse. It's I had to watch season five. It's I had nuts. to watch it. It is but uh, the only thing I'm <laughs> gonna say is like Season five is upsetting. Like it looks like it's drawn by a fucking <laughs> a mental patient or something it's, oh my god it's bad oh my god it's it's mad, horrible it? um i was just gonna say like it makes me like, really appreciate something like delicious and dungeon when you know even when it's action. limited it's just like really crisp lines and really nice yeah. well this is the thing as well like why like obviously like it was made at a certain time like but like like we have disney movies from the fucking 1940s that look better than better image quality than this i don't know why it's such bad image quality i i, I I wouldn't have gotten into animation college if I'd submitted something, any one of those episodes. <laughs> you know, it would have it would have been a fail. It would have been like no, get out. If, yeah, if that was yeah. a project at yeah. any point in first to fourth year, I'd be like no, no. There's get out basically of here. a scene where Wolverine's just like tell Cyclops I turned his car into convertible, and like Wolverine just pushes the roof off. It's like he doesn't even slice it. It's just like he just goes. <laughs> Ah, and like it perfectly comes clean off it's just like this is terrible uh but uh i have watched some episodes of it um yeah some of it's like a fever dream but um i did see online someone saying like hey remember that time in the x-men cartoon where xavier met uh, magneto reading yeah. the holocaust and it's just like <laughs> jesus christ that's, that's he horrendous win- he wins the fight by making him relive his fucking <laughs> the murder of his family and his people yeah that's yeah, horrendous it's hilarious that somebody wrote that and was like this is fine yeah this yeah, is yeah yeah why not we yeah we say it different times but yeah 
not sure if that's it. But uh, so will you be will you be tuning into? I see. I saw a clip of the X Men, the new cartoon. Um, I was surprised that the animation, kind of, some of it was as cool as it looked, but then some of it is a little bit strange. Like you know, kind of. I think it's like I think Rogue trolls. Uh, Sentinel head and another sentinel, and all of a sudden it's like I'm I'm really so disappointed because shows it into a giant sentinel. It's just like that would technically be the same, and they just look like different size heads, different size robots, you know. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. The animation doesn't look as bad as it's all. You know, I'm disappointed because it's one, it's CG, and two, yeah. apparently it's made by Studio Mir, who did, um, like. Korra Avatar, which is just oh shit, fucking flawless. Yeah, it's made by them, and yet instead they've made this kind of blended CG approach. And it's just like just let them do hand drawn animation. If somebody told me three years ago, uh, the guys that made Korra make X Men yeah. are gonna make an X Men cartoon, I would like fucking yes, amazing. You'd freak out, and yeah, instead I, I have even seen the. I've even seen those. You've sent it to me. I've even seen that yep. that core animation stuff. Uh, the the you know the kind of the mo- the movement. The, yeah, mm-hmm. it's wild, wild, wild stuff. Core is super. I saw um, it's kind of a small fan made documentary about the series, and I think I think season one of Korra had something like fifty thousand drawings per episode, or something. Something insane. Um, like, it's just so good. Now, they were overworked, but just pay them more. <laughs> yeah, yeah just, pay them more for sure. Yeah. Um, just simple. Cause there is no shortage of money to make this stuff. Like, Have you watched not, Avatar The Last Airbender on Netflix? I did, yep. Yeah. It's okay. It's not, it's not terrible, but, it's but I, I probably wouldn't recommend it to people. I probably wouldn't recommend oh, okay, it to okay, okay. most people. Like I tell you, what check it out because you know you have an appetite for that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah. whereas, like I would tell, I would tell people watch the cartoon. You know, I would tell everybody watch the cartoon, even if they think it's not their thing. It's like just stick with it. It's great. It's just a really good cartoon. Whereas, if you don't think you'd yeah, like sure. the show, you maybe wouldn't. It'll be 50-50, you know? Um, yeah, sir. It's kind of interesting because around, around the same time, just after, I think a week after it came out on Netflix, Shogun came out. I think I was saying this to Aiden last week or whenever. Shogun came out on Disney and it's just, it's 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 very, it, it's, it's brutally violent. I'm not saying they should make a brutally violent Avatar show, but it could have just done with a bit more kind of grounding, grounding, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or even just uh, yeah, w- you know a, a, a bit more crouching tiger, hidden dragon than than live action cartoon, which is kind of what yeah, they went for fair. instead. Um, yes, yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, I would, I, I desperately do want to watch Shogun. It's on the list. I'll probably start this week. It looks phenomenal. I love a good it's kind great. of. Uh, is it is it set in the Edo period in Japan or what? Where where is it? Is it uh, where is it set? Is it China? China? It's in Japan. It's, it's in Japan. Yeah, I don't yeah. know exactly which period. Because okay, there's okay. there's a couple of different periods. I don't know when they yeah section when they fall. Yeah, yeah. It's fe- feudal Japan. Let's yeah, say. well, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I love this stuff. It looks so. Exciting. It's very have good. You ever, have you ever seen the Kingdom on Netflix? Uh, the zombie one. Yes. Yeah. That's very good. I know it's obviously zombie and city, but it's great. But uh, no, Shogun looks amazing. I would love to see Shogun. It's great. Yep. It's great. Um, one one season. Just one, like it only came out, it's only started four weeks ago, I think. Okay. Oh, okay so it's sure. just one season so far. Yeah. Um, I saw there was some kind of, it's probably, a cli- I didn't click on it because it looked like a clickbait article. It said that like, it's probably only going to get one season. I was just like, I don't know why that is. I don't know if they meant that. I don't know if they meant that like the, the book it's based on, there's only enough for one season. I don't know mm. if they meant it like that or if they mm. meant it's too expensive and it's probably not i don't know but Mm. it's good watch it um (laughs) i was talking to pete about it he was he was very upset by something that happens in the first episode okay Um, i will watch it yeah and then there's something i I don't think he's watched past episode three 
but there's something that happens at the end of episode four and i was just like fucking hell so i texted him about it and he's like he hasn't seen it yet but he's like i don't think i can watch it it's too it's too disturbing he finds it too disturbing but i don't think it's everything that happens in it is kind of historical so you know it, there's nothing yeah, in there yeah, yeah. that's just there for shock value you know yeah 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 the ending of episode four is pretty shocking though <laughs> <laughs> okay well there's nothing there for shock value but um, it's shocking yeah, yeah. No, it's not done for shock value it, but it's just it did i i just didn't see it happening i didn't see it coming mm. it just when it happened i was like oh shit and the way it's depicted is i don't know if it's accurate or not but it's just they they really went for it with the depiction of what yeah. happens so i was just like jesus okay. christ <laughs> Okay, you see, this is the thing. So, you see, people go on about the, you know lately. People will be talking about Saltburn, and it's just like I've seen worse though. Like, oh god, yeah. Like, yes, like kind of. I know what they're saying. Like the concept of what he's doing is gross and awful and stuff. But like, I've have also watched Bone Tomahawk, <laughs> and there's a scene in that that's pretty like, oof, oof, god, brutal. That was shocking, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, you know, I would watch Shogun. Have you seen Bone Tomahawk? Bone Tomahawk? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know the scene I'm talking about, do you? I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd heard about I'd heard about it before I saw the film. I did not. I was shocked, yeah. and I I was really worried about it. And like it, it it it's horrible, but I don't know. There's just something about when I actually saw it. I was just I didn't find it as bad as I was expecting it to be. You know, fair, fair, um, fair. Yeah, yeah, I don't know I why. Was, it's I just shocked. yeah. There was something just a bit. There's something a little cartoonish about it for me. I don't know. Fair, um, fair. I, I, it's yeah. been a while since I've seen it, but uh, I was pretty horrified by it. Uh, speaking about being pretty horrified by things, uh, the latest Crow trailer. What do you think? <laughs> I think it looks okay. Yeah, I actually you know? think it doesn't look too um, bad. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't. I saw people just like slating it and slating how he looks. And it's just like, he looks the way he should look if this was made today. Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense for him to look like... Like Brandon Lee in the nineties, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I think the concept is a bit dated, particularly like the fact that it has to be a, a goth, basically. You know, it's just like it's like you know, there's the mythology of the crow and the spirit and yeah. becoming a, this kind of vengeful spirit. It's like, yeah. does it only? Does it only? happened to goth people like yeah. you know it's like really 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 got people um like i i don't i don't dislike it i think some of the tattoo choices that they gave him are very strange there's that one mm-hmm. he has on his chest that's like half a face and one of the eyes is his nipple <laughs> have you seen that no yeah, i have that's not very strange uh so he has basically a crudely drawn face side kind of like a three-quarter face on his chest and one of the eyes is his nipple it's a very strange one but um like i think i think like the the trailer makes the movie look brutal and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. you know uh be interested to see it but like at the end of the day as you said like kind of like it is it's a really it's a terribly dated concept you know mm-hmm. like i wouldn't necessarily give that book to anybody now and expect them to not struggle through it or enjoy it and stuff because yeah like, it's, like i i i really liked the film first time i saw it yeah i still like the film yeah it's it's yeah, dated the soundtrack is great but yep. i knew it was based on a comic and i kind of hadn't basically like by the time i got the comic it was maybe over 15 years later and then i was reading oh, the comic yeah. going oh i finally got this thing i was reading it's just like this is dog shit <laughs> like i don't understand the I, I could understand the appeal of the comic if i read it when i was 12 or 13 maybe yeah, you know yeah uh, when yeah. i read it a couple of years later i was just like the artwork isn't great the story is fucking the writing is pretty weak the concept is is great but we're not a yeah, fan like, of the comic. i remember like it's, i remember um uh, maybe being 16 17 i'm not too sure but like uh, obviously i'd seen a movie at that stage you know but uh, maybe I got in the DVD or something, but there was a special feature on the DVD, which was a really in-depth interview with James O'Barr and his process mm-hmm. and talking about stuff and things. And uh, poor James O'Barr, uh, you know, uh, from memory, uh, just has gone through loads of shit and horrible things happened to him and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, you know. Uh, and this was some sort of therapy, you know, to a degree. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and the book itself, like, it's kind of... 
uh, look kind of lots of books are guilty of it and stuff, but it's a little bit of a trope, you know. Uh, yep. In in ways, you know, uh, in a lot of ways, but uh, and I probably would say that trope uh, doesn't really work anymore. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, uh, I I think it's probably like a little bit insensitive or not insensitive, but something like that. I don't know, but. Yep. Uh, but uh, I'd be interested to see how they do like the new movie. I thought, I thought for some reason, I thought James, Jason Momoa was going to be the crow for a while. Um, I thought there was talks about that. I think he was, uh, was supposed to be, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, and I they've been they've been trying was... to remake it, get it off the ground for oh, years now. Yeah. 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 And um, what's the guy Bill? Is it Bill Skarsgård? Is going to be the crow? Bill Skarsgård. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, his brother's in another uh, a different movie, like Boy Kills World or something. That looks strange. You heard about that? don't know i don't think so uh yeah check it out check out that trailer boy kills world uh it looks it looks weird um he's in mad shape for it but uh but, but yeah look the crew uh, i'm interested in it but at the same time i 100 percent know what you're saying like the edgy got thing kind of could 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 you know we could move away from it slightly but then, yeah. then people don't like fucking change. People are absolutely bizarre. People are furious that this is being remade in the first place. Like, I, I, I get having reverence for the first film, but it's, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of people who just don't want this at all. And if it was to happen at all, they'd want it to be exactly the same. But they'd also would say what's the point of remaking it's just, I know, just I know. let's just see let's just see how it is you, yeah. get, you get you do get a bit burned out from all this stuff don't you the internet uh yeah. i <laughs> just does the, the discourse internet. yeah yeah <laughs> but honestly like it's just like uh like the more and more you know time goes on it's just kind of like we were kind of joked about it during the week but it's just like the internet is just it's just not cool anymore it used to be fun and cool and it's, it's not fun and cool anymore at all it's not um I sent you some stuff this week. I was talking about the new X Men books that are going to launch from Marvel and stuff. It consists of three teams: uh, Gail Simone, who you're familiar with, right, as a writer and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Gail's great. She's going to be doing one book called The Uncanny X Men, which is a team led by Rogue, featuring Nightcrawler, Jubilee, Gambit, and Wolverine, and it's going to be set in New Orleans. And then you have good the, lineup. Good lineup, and then you have the main book, which is going to be. Uh, set in alaska i believe and it's a team uh and i think it's written by is it jay mckay or jed mckay whatever that guy's name is um and it's gonna be led by cyclops uh and it's gonna have juggernaut beast oh god who is it in this one juggernaut beast um kid omega someone called temper who i'm not particularly familiar with magneto uh, Juggernaut, Temper, Magneto, Cyclops, Beast, Kid Omega. Uh, oh God, why can't I remember the other people? Oh, sorry, here it is. Uh, Magic. Uh, I think Psylocke. Uh, I don't know who Kid Omega is, and I don't know who Temper is. And then there's a there's going to be an exceptional X Men book, which is written by Eve L. Ewing. Uh, and it's got a fee- it's got a team led by Katie Pride with three new mutants and Emma Frost, uh, not set in Chicago. Uh, the 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 feedback I have heard about this is hilarious. Uh, I don't understand it at all. Basically, like and like here, I, I don't really care. Like I'll give it a shot. There's there's gonna be a new uh, X Force title, X Factor title, a Storm solo book, a Wolverine solo book. They're bringing back Nyx and a Phoenix solo book, but. Uh, one crowd of people are saying it's pandering mcu they're all female <laughs> like or like two of the teams are led by uh females uh then they'd say that scott has been made to look like a twink and i've heard all this bullshit right and then on the other side of it i've heard that it's not diverse enough yeah that there's like they're showing you teams that only like you know uh you know like okay and like it being not diverse enough it could be a fair shout like one of the teams is predominantly white except for the inclusion of jubilee um i heard someone say that kurt wagner is white which you know given that he was born and raised in germany maybe but uh they're saying that he doesn't he doesn't account uh, and oh 
but that's the whole point is that he, he uh yeah so so this is where we're at so it's just kind of like i was just like i think like future of x-men looks kind of fun and then it's just like bo- nobody's happy with it basically oh god yeah but i think that i think that's a cool x-men team anyways led by rogue it sounds like a cool idea mm-hmm. uh nightcrawler jubilee rogue gambit wolverine like this is my faves you know uh but yeah i, I do love i do love x-men i love x-men I love X Men for what it is. There, there was some wild character designs in it, but they just worked as well. Yeah. You know, that was yeah. the appeal of it. There was just like, oh, who's this? What's this weirdo's story? What's that about? I, um, <laughs> it kind of lost that a bit when it kind of went into the two thousands. Like, it'd be hard to recreate, you know. Yeah. Um, see, and and this is exactly exactly what I think what this relaunch is trying to kind of do. It's yeah. trying to make it get weird again. Get yeah. weird again. Yeah, they definitely yeah. are trying to kind of bring it back to like the whole like, you know, mutants are the enemy. Like people don't like them. Like there's no Krakoa. There's no mansion. Everybody's free. Everybody thought okay, we could be back at the mansion and stuff, but there's no mansion. Not at the moment, anyways. <laughs> and then like, people freak out about like again. Like, like look, I understand. I, I, it's not for me to say that there's not enough inclusion in these things or whatever. You know, like that's not for me to say. However. Surely anybody that's read an X-Men comic book in their life knows that you have the main ensemble or a team, whatever you want to call them. And you have all these other characters that become just as relevant and just as, as, yeah. as main things. Like, yeah. you know, they don't have to be on the roster the hero lineup yeah. to not be. Yeah, exactly. To Like kind of like for all, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, exception X-Men could focus on Bishop and just be all about Bishop. Do you know what I mean? Like, kind of like, it's just like, it's just, it's too early to say, yeah. And it goes both sides. All those fucking morons talking about the MCU and all that kind of stuff. Suck a fuck. Just, just go drown. Um, but it's just like, uh, it's just like, you know, like, but it's just like, yeah, they're not, they're not fucking X-Men fans anyways. You know, I saw, I saw a great image from the comic, uh, from the cartoon and it was like Rogue getting like basically accosted by her family or something, telling her to get out. You know, we don't want no muted daughter or something. And the, the guy's shaking his fist that he has a big, like, he has a baseball cap with the American flag on it, you know? And it's just like, it's just like, wow. You know, it's like, things have never changed, obviously, but it's like. It's gone woke. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and X-Men is gone woke. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's gonna be like them. Like, yeah, even talking about like, like fucking Colin Cyclops a twink. I actually didn't really know what that was. Uh, Eden explained it to me, but it's like uh, really. Um, I know, I know, I know. It's like I, I you're I, very I, innocent, but I know it's like it's it's like it's meant to be like a feminine man. That's what I thought it Part was. Part of it, yeah. But it's but it's like a little of, bit, yeah. it's 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 something like that. You know, is what I, yeah. what, 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 what I thought, but uh, but obviously it has worse worse meanings. It depends on who says it, you know, I guess, because it's like, uh, it's, it's a word in the gay community that they use, but they use it in a standardous way. No. Yeah. That's what uh, I'm saying. Like, I mean, you, 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 you could, you could say that fucking twink yeah. and then it would suddenly be, you yeah, know, that's what people, that's what some people were saying <laughs> about, about yeah. it, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, idiots and Magneto's in a float. Link, 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 Link is a twink. Link from Zelda. So, okay. It's very much a twink. Okay. Cloud is a twink, 100%. All the Final Cloud Fantasy characters. Final Fantasy VII. A lot of Final yeah, Fantasy, to be fair, right? Super twinky. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I think I know what it means, but it kind of makes me also kind of picture like pixie boys, little fairy boys. That's what it is. <laughs> fair. <laughs> <laughs> what is a twink? But, uh, uh, and then there's a character called Temper, who I'm not really familiar with, and they have the fire, they have fire and ice powers, but they look cool. I Originally, I thought like, that's a weird looking storm, but uh, that's just me being ignorant. Um, I'm not familiar with the character. Storm's getting her own book, so that's cool. Uh, and then we have three new mutants: Bronze, Melee, and I can't remember the other person's name. It's not a word I'm familiar with, but uh, I'm excited for it. I'll see how it goes. Um, I went to Dublin Comic Con last Sunday. How was that? Great. Yeah, not surprised. Um, <laughs> this year they had far more comics than before. And I did get some nice kind of just books that I was interested in. You know, I got the first appearance of Shadow Star and Warpath. I got the, I, had, I already had the cameo appearance of Gambit and the first appearance of Gambit, but then they just, they just had the second appearance. So I was like, well, oh, it's cheap. I get it. Um, but none of these books are, none of these books are expensive whatsoever. They're all, you know, mm-hmm. I ended up getting X-Force number one as well. 
and I got uh, already had X Men one from the nineties, but I had I got the first appearance of Omega Red, um, but uh, these again these are all like you know X Men number one was the highest selling book I think of all time, followed by X Force number one, uh, so you can get them like I think X Men yep. sold three million like they're they're dirt cheap out there. Um, they're out there. Yeah, yeah. and then I, I met Declan Shabby, sat out to Declan, previous guest on the show. Uh, Declan gave me two cool Deadpool, a Deadpool print and a Moon Knight print, uh, which is very kind of him. Uh, Rafa Leboska, who uh, is a chap I tattoo and is also a comic book artist. He's working on James Bond with uh, Ennis. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, Rafa was there, and Rafa gave me a Daredevil print. And uh, I tried to buy, he, to be honest, I tried to buy this stuff off the last, but none of them would fucking take my money. Uh, I did have to give Rafa, like, I, it's a nice problem. Yeah, yeah, I basically had to, take, I had to tell Rafa, like, no, 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 like, like, because I got a headshot, I got a head drawn of, of Gambit off him. And because uh, uh, he was like, oh, I'll do one for you. And I was just like, oh, go on, man. I, like, I told him this character, he's like, I never drawn Gambit, so I was like, go for it. But uh, but I was like, hey, man, like, kind of fucking, like, you pay for your tattoos, I'm paying for this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, fair is fair. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I got so I got that, and uh, then I met Danny Earls. Danny Earls is an Irish comic book artist who's blown up in the last year. Uh, he has done covers for a lot of books. He's done a few Superman covers, and he's doing he's done a few like uh, Venom books and Alien, I think it was, and he's doing a few Hulk issues at the moment. Uh, some filler issues on the Hulk. Uh, Danny's stuff is kicking off. Um, nice chap. I have not met him before. But uh, really, really nice chap, and again, kind of, he tried to give me three prints, um, but uh, you know, I I insisted, uh, and I paid for them. But I got a cool dual power bomb, Hellboy, and Daredevil prints off him. Uh, so that aspect of the of the thing was of the convention was fun. Um, I did go. I I wanted to go to the Irish comic book panel, and I thought I was sitting in the right room. This is my fault. Uh, it's just you know, I I I have poor. I'm not the best at reading directions or that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, but I sit in a in a kind of uh, auditorium waiting for the Irish comic book panel, <laughs> and this lady came on stage, and I'm not too sure. I I, I, I I when I say this, it's just I just I wasn't too sure what was going on because she got on stage and she started doing this power slide and i was like this definitely i don't think i i don't think this is about comics <laughs> i'm not in the right place yeah, i'm not in the right place <laughs> and uh and she started talking about consent but i'm i'm not too sure in what context only because she started talking about Baldur's Gate and then she said that she had voiced one of the characters in Baldur's Gate and she was good to talk about consent through the guise of this thing. I'm not too sure. I'm not. I don't know what was going on. I have the preferences because then she okay. put on horns, right? And I, and I and I was just like at that stage, I was just like I'm fucking getting out of here. Before she put on the horns, she did mention that someone had sex with a werewolf. I think you can have sex with a bear. You know, Could have been a bear. Some somebody uh, yeah, or somebody turns into a bear. Or so, I, yeah, something like that. And then she said that she voiced one of the people on the show or on the on the, on the game, and that she was going to talk through this thing through the guise of them because that's the only one way she knows how or something. Uh, uh, I have no idea. Fucking I have no idea what's going on. And again, though, this is, this is my interpretation of a situation that I yeah, also yeah, was clueless yeah. in. So I don't want to put down anything because I don't know what was going on, but I, I got out of there. Uh, and then I was looking for the, the conference for the comic book panel. And when I found it, it was like two Oh one or something. And I went to open the door and it was locked. It was just like, fuck. So they obviously were just like, people didn't close. You know, which is fair enough not to disturb it, but it's just like I kind of hung around to see that, and then I missed it. That's annoying. It is what it is. Um, I don't think you should be locking doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. Yeah, you should. I don't think you should, especially with fucking what happened there a couple of years ago. Remember that? Where? At one of the conventions. I don't know. It was an anime one. It was an anime one, maybe. Okay. It was some convention, some geek convention in Dublin and some guy working at the thing or actually was the woman working at it someone was sexually assaulted i think oh, she worked there and the guy yeah yeah yes um, but because the thing is like if if you needed to open the door the person who's obviously able to open that door is inside the room just have them stand outside and say actually we're not letting people yeah. in once it's started yeah. like, you know again like don't lock the fucking I door could be wrong. I, I, I could be wrong but hey, i tried so many yeah. doors and i just couldn't get in i could hear the some of the some of the stuff over microphone or whatever but it was just kind of like 
it's like I'm, I'm really sure like I'm, I'm in the right place again though if I'm, if yeah. I wasn't in the right place I know I have a terrible sense of direction and stuff but also mm-hmm. like kind of then it just wasn't laid out properly either or you know signed signed the best way possible but uh but like I said I got a I got a I got a few comics that's the main thing yeah good yeah that's good um what's your St. Patrick's Day plans oh this is St. Patrick's Day what's your St. Patrick's Day plan nothing if I do anything at all today probably be trying to finish Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth Okay, how's that going I've been playing for Playing it for almost a hundred hours, almost a hundred hours now, and I've been enjoying it. Okay, excellent. A couple of gripes with it and stuff, and then yesterday I just got to this. Like I've been playing almost a hundred hours, between ninety and a hundred hours. Yeah. Right. And it's an open world, so anytime there's something is a bit, you know, if I'm not feeling something in the game, I can just go off and do something else. Yeah. Right. There's nothing in the game that anything I haven't liked isn't essential to like progressing through the game. So I've just like gone off and done other stuff. I was playing it yesterday and I got to this boss and it's, it's shit. It's such a shit boss. It's just, it's so different from every other boss that's come before it. It's the third boss in a row. So I can't save beforehand. So like when I eventually gave up yesterday, I'll have to restart from the second boss. So it's like, it's three bosses in a row. And like the way the combat works is you're usually in a team of, three people maybe two people Mm -hmm. and part of the whole gameplay mechanic is you can do like um team moves you can do like a co-op move with another person on your team it's very rare in the game that you're playing as just cloud Mm -hmm. so like when you're playing as just cloud there's an entire mechanic that you're locked out from this this team co-op special move thing um so yeah you're fighting this boss your other two team members are taken away. It's the third boss in a row. And you have to fight it in a very specific style. There's only one way to beat it. And it just feels inconsistent. You're going to have to dodge and get an attack right after the dodge. But like I've played, you know, from software games, which have like, you know, notoriously difficult bosses. And for yes. the most part, I, I don't get frustrated. Most of the time it feels fair. Yeah. It feels like I, if I haven't beaten it, it's usually because I'm I'm fucking up. Whereas with this, like I dodge one attack and I try dodge it the same way, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work, and I'm just getting hammered by by this. It's very fussy. You can't attack the boss directly because he just does this counter move on you. Mm-hmm. So the only way to attack him is to dodge and immediately hit him with an attack, but from a distance. If you hit him up close, he uses this counter move on you, and it's just it's just it's a real hard roadblock in the middle of the game interesting yeah Whereas, yeah. like if that happened at any other point in the game it's just like ah this is optional this is side content i don't i'm gonna go off and do other stuff and explore and you think this is, uh, feeling... oh definitely oh, okay, i, I looked okay. it up straight away and everybody's yeah. like everybody's saying this boss is bullshit okay, it just it just it just interrupts the flow of the game mm-hmm. it removes some of the mechanics that you've been playing for 100 hours uh, it's very restrictive in how you have to beat the boss it's just it just sucks and you can't you can't walk away from it and do other things because it means restarting from the second boss fight so mm-hmm. you essentially have to do two boss fights in a row and it's just it's just such a especially with open world games so much of the design of it is like to just let you flow just like you know you start playing it and you're going 15 minutes later you're kind of playing it and then before you know it, you know four or five hours have gone you know, you just kind of get lost. Whereas with this, it's yeah. just, it just sucks. I could see myself. I've been in a hurry to try finish it because you, you, you've played Final Fantasy VII, have you? Oh or? God, no, no. You haven't? No. No? Sure, I, did. I only learned what the twink was today. Okay. So you're not familiar with like one of the main character deaths in the, no. in the game from, okay. In you, the, you the original version me, of the game. Because that's, in, that's fair because, yeah. In the original version of the game, I can't remember was it three or four discs, but at the end of disc I don't know disc one or two, one of your party members is killed. And it was like it was so shocking at the time. Is it the guy with gun hands? hands? No, uh, it's not the guy with gun hands. Well, I don't it's, mean uh, oh as in like because I like him. <laughs> trunks? Is that Trunks? Um, Who's that? 
that's Barrett. That's what I, Trunks is that's from what I said. You should, Dragon you Ball. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Basically, yeah, there's a character in the original game, and I think I can't remember is it disc one or two, but she's killed off by the villain, and it's just shocking because you've been playing the game for 40, 50 hours at that stage, and one of your party members is just killed, and you, and it, you know, it was kind of one of the first times that anybody played an RPG at that scale where like the decisions and things you do can have different outcomes. Actually, yeah, yeah. So as you're playing it, you're kind of wondering, is I could have done something differently? Like, can I? Is there is there a way to prevent this? Did this happen because of mm-hmm. kind of previous and like there was there was rumors for years that persisted that said like oh you know apparently there's a secret way to save her or something like that, but um, they remade the game some twenty almost twenty years later or whatever, and they've changed some of the story and I basically I don't know if they're going to kill her off mm-hmm. or is the whole point of it that. Is the story going to play out differently at this time? Because that it seems to be hinting at that that it's a remake, so maybe it won't go the same way. So I've been trying to finish it before it gets spoiled because it only came out on the 29th, so it's only been out just coming up in three weeks, maybe. Yeah, just shy of three weeks. Yeah, like yeah. eighteen days, but yeah, eighteen days. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just trying. I haven't. I haven't had much time to play it, so then when I do have time to play it, I'm playing it for, for hours. I'm like trying to speed. I know I said I don't have, I've been playing it for a hundred hours, but I don't have, basically like that was done in maybe four days, yeah. you know, yeah, just, yeah, um, yeah. before that I was just like only able to play it for an hour or two or I couldn't play it all. But, um, yeah, I'm trying to get to the end to see before it's spoiled, but I could see myself giving up on this boss because I just, it doesn't, it's not enjoyable. That's terrible. This boss isn't enjoyable. It's yeah. Which is, it's crazy. It's crazy that they did this a hundred hours into the game. Mental. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, 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 it's just at odds with every other design and gameplay mechanic that has come before it. And I'm just, like I said, I don't mind a challenging boss if it feels fair, but this doesn't feel fair. Like I said, it, it like I'm dodging attacks sometimes and sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. It's like, I don't know what I'm, the game isn't really communicating to me what I'm doing wrong. Fair. And that's really, that's not, that's just frustrating. Yeah. It's not, it's not an enjoyable challenge. So that's all I'm really going to do today. I yeah. Think, I just think, other than, wait till some Twitter will post a video about how to beat it on YouTube. And the internet. <laughs> I watched, I saw two videos last night and it took one guy 20 minutes to beat this boss. And it was just like, that, that's the other thing. You have to, you have to hit it in a really particular way. And I got eventually, like eventually after I don't know how many attempts, I got the boss down to like 40% or 50% health. And at that point, a second character comes in to help them. And it's just like, oh, fuck this. Like it just, it, it just throws another thing at you. And it's just like, this isn't fun. This is, this is just frustrating. Um, but yeah, I watched two videos. It took one person about 15, 20 minutes to do it. And it's just like, that's boring. You don't want to be fighting a boss for 15, 20 minutes. Another person then seemed to do it in about seven minutes. Mm. It's just like I could see their method working, but I could also see it having to do it in a really particular, precise way. And I'm just like, that's kind of boring. So I'll see. Okay, fair. I'll see. Um, for less fails, you can do what I'm going to do, which is get uh, drunk and watch Irish Wish, Wish with Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> is that really what you're going to do? <laughs> Fuck yeah.